Hi, everyone. Hello. 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 Um, welcome back to the Warhammer Book, pa- book Club. Book Club? Club? Pass? <laughs> pass? Club? Club? Welcome back to welcome the Warhammer back. Book, book club. club with me, Arvitarian, and you. Mira Manga. There we go. Look, I think we should I'm do now that. Hereticus Manga. Hereticus. Well, now uh, you're, you've come dressed appropriately for the book we're doing. Um, for yes. some reason that neither of us can really figure out, we're doing ignorant armies. Ignorant armies. Yeah. I can remember why now. Can you remember? Good, because I... one of my first questions, Mira, is <laughs> why are we doing this book? So this, just a bit. This is an anthology of short stories. Yes. From the very, very early days of um, the Black well, Warhammer books, but basically That's they're right. all um, Warhammer fantasy novels. Yeah. But, so they're Warhammer fantasy short stories. Yeah. From a number of different people. Yes. From like the late eighties. Yeah. And um, I don't know why we're doing this. Okay, so I write for. Uh, oh. I write for a. Uh, it's like a. Uh, well, basically, it's a, a the Art of Warhammer magazine called Twenty Eight. Yes. So it's like basically Warhammer, but everything indie. Yeah. Lots of weird and wonderful things that we celebrate in there. Lots of like kit bashing artists and a lot of weird and wonderful things. I think we're doing turnip heads. And yep. you should definitely check out 28 Mag online if you're into the hobby. Yeah, it's and, really, it is actually really, really good. Um, and yeah. th- as you are like kind of baptising me with the heresy and yeah. the gaunts and everything, 28 t- took me all the way back to the beginning. So I'm going to be talking on their podcast about this. Right. But also, because people know I like D&D yes. and fantasy. And this is quite D&D sometimes. Very D&D. Yeah. I was right at home here. In Including the looks like it was written while they were playing a game yeah. level of D&D and writing. And also in the 80s, these kind of colour clashing, the red and the greens. Yeah, were it's very... got a red and green cover with like a classic Chaos Warrior on the front. It's got every colour. Guys, look at the old school games workshop logo. Yeah, it's, it's, it is an item of its time. Yeah. And we will get to that too when we start talking about the stories. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this is a Warhammer Fantasy book. For anyone who is not aware, I'm pretty sure everyone watching my channel will be aware, but Warhammer Fantasy was what Warhammer was before it was Age of Sigmar. I did so not know it's that. it's the fantasy world that existed up till 2015. Why would you rebrand Warhammer Fantasy? Because um, Warhammer Fantasy was very, as you'll tell from this, it's got a lot of generic fantasy tropes in it. Yeah. Age of Sigmar does too, but Age of Sigmar is a bit more brandable. And a bit. And basically, the real reason was Warhammer Fantasy was dying in 2015. Like, no one was playing the game. Aww. The game was like a big regimented game. You needed loads of models to play. Yeah. It got a bit stolid, and everyone who had played it had the armies. It wasn't growing. So they decided mm. to can it. And while they were canning the game and rewriting the game, they also revamped the world. So the world is now a bit more unique. Got it. There are a some bit u- more trademarkable. A bit more trademark. <laughs> a lot more trademarkable. A bit more unique. And a bit more easy access. I spo- it, it's, it's its own thing. Warhammer, you'll, you know from what reading this, I suppose, that it's got a lot of Tolkien-esque tropes in it. Yeah. There's some weird stuff in it. There were some, there were some things that made Warhammer fantasy really distinctive yeah the fact that everything's german is is one of them like for some reason or anything yeah, yeah, that yeah. would be set in like the middle ages in britain is set in like the 16th century in germany yeah yeah, yeah. like later middle ages like, you know, early modern period germany is like when it's all set later middle ages actually um uh, i love when ian corrects his own law yeah. himself uh, um, so, so it's just a quick question if i was a fantasy player yeah could i bring my armies across to age of sigma yeah so did they, it make people angry yeah um okay. so so yes it did um uh, th- there was a load of fantasy players who got very angry about not having their game to play yeah despite the fact they probably hadn't bought anything for ages and no one was joining and they yeah, all yeah, bought yeah. their armies 10 years ago and yeah. just play, yeah but they like what um, they like and i yeah. respect that um and there was a lot of course then you obviously got a load of people going well age of sigma's for kids then it's not a proper game. We oh. made it too stu- too simple. You get all that. Um, okay. Age of Sigmar is now, I think, significantly more popular than Fantasy okay. was. Um, yeah. And uh, and then what they're actually doing now is because they've got quite a lot more successful, and they've got things like the Horus Heresy coming out. They're now going to release next year, I think, a game called Warhammer: The Old World, which is basically Warhammer wow. Fantasy again, but done a bit more as a niche product. Interesting. So now they've gone like, oh, actually, because for a while they had this policy of just doing Age of Sigmar and Warhammer yeah, 40k yeah, yeah. and that was it. And um, okay. and now they're doing a lot more games or a lot, and they're tailoring games to different sort of yeah. groups of fans. So Heresy, for example, runs on an old version of the 40k rules, which have been oh. tidied up a bit. So it's for people who liked how that used to play. Yeah. 
they're basically figuring out that they can market 40k and Age of Sigmar to maybe a younger, newer audience, market the old world, which is old Warhammer Fantasy, and Heresy to an older audience. Clever. Okay. And then they've also got lots of smaller skirmish games for like yeah. different sorts of people. It does feel like it's a good time to be getting into Warhammer. It yeah, feels like they made choice. a lot of money through lockdown. Yeah. And they're spending it on exciting stuff like TV and and letting, letting yeah. opening things out a bit more. Yeah, yeah. So so here we are then with Ignorant okay. Armies, which is like your sort of let's... I feel like this is a book which tries to get the tone of what Warhammer Fantasy was, yeah. specifically why it's different to every other sort of fantasy. So please, if you have an action movie plot summary for a <laughs> anthology of ancient psychedelic fantasy, <laughs> go for it. Okay. Ready? Yeah. In a world, not space marine world, the old world, weird with a Y and wonderful medieval things are afoot. Do you yearn for a simpler time when wizards existed, everyone was hallucinating like heck, and enemies were evil birds and humans made of beetles? <laughs> then this is the book for you. It's 1989 in the UK. Maggie Thatcher has been in power for 10 years. Sky TV made, it fir made its first broadcast. Inflation stood at 7.8% <laughs> and Games Workshop still calls its shops Games Workshops. Gather around the fire to listen to a collection of stories of some very unlucky individuals who tangle with chaos in a variety of icky, gross and unsettling ways. Yeah. Let's read Ignorant Armies. Yeah, that's pretty good. There's a lot afoot in the forests of not Germany in this book, isn't there? There really, really yeah. is. Yeah. There really, so really is. We start with a classic. We start with Geheimnisnacht. <laughs> I've been practicing that. Bless you. Yeah. <laughs> Say uh, that again. Geheimnisnacht. Well, you're so hot. This is amazing. This <laughs> so is why people with keep tuning Geheim in. Geheimnisnacht. I got, you know what? So people often correct my pronunciation because I don't listen to audiobooks. Yeah. Um, sometimes they're wrong. But uh, I was very happy that when I did, I did a great, uh, I did a video the other week um, on something can't remember what yeah um and uh and i got comments from people uh from scandinavia yeah. for pronouncing cor per correctly all the scandinavian words in it Yay. and i was like there you there you go yeah. anyway yeah behind this nacht um yeah. Gotrek and Felix are our characters. This now they're really famous. A bit like um yes a, a bunch bit, of yeah. people they're really famous old warhammer characters yeah i think this is bill king um, uh, so my, my notes here, I will say now, because this is like a bit throwaway, my notes for this are very casual. I, mean, I have written, Got Trek and Felix Disrupt a German Fetish Night. This is dreadful. That's, that's <laughs> what actually seen, happens. I've never seen such unprofessionalism from our biter, Ian. <laughs> I shall be talking to your commandant. Grumpy dwarfs never seem to write the, find the right time to die. No. So Gotrek and Felix are in a town and they find out some of the kids have gone missing and they, they go and look, they, they don't care. And then Gotrek's like, oh, well, there could be some evil people uh, yeah. killing the kids and then you get to die in battle against them. That's mm -hmm. good, isn't it? So then Gotrek's like, oh, okay, fine. Um, he's a slayer. So... In dwarf culture in Warhammer, um, if you commit like dishonor, yeah, one of the ways to find atonement is to become a slayer. You stop wearing armor, you dye your beard ginger and make a great big Mohican like you're in an eighties metal band. Okay, and you go out looking for death against the most worthy thing, like so troll wow. slayers, giant slayers, that sort of okay, thing. Okay, okay. They all come become like slayers, and they're all crazy, and all they want is to fight and find death. Uh, at the hands of a notable uh, enemy. Okay, that explains a lot. Yeah. So, and Gotrek is a very, very famous slayer. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So they go to try and rescue these kids. Yeah. They F find, find a cult. Find the kids are at a stone circle. Yeah. Where it's all getting a bit... Everyone's a bit of mutated and it's all a bit sexy. They're basically a, a, a big um, medieval orgy. They've disappeared because they're off trying to bring a demon. Yeah. Summon, a demon, summon a demon through yeah. the na naughty, naughty orgy stuff. Naughty orgy. And... Um, it turns out the missing kids were part of the cult. Yeah, it turns out the missing kids did it. And they get, and, uh, they yeah, get, they get chopped up. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Gotrek got got chops them all up. Uh, and that's it. That's so the plot. So I quite <clears throat> liked... Look at me trying to keep this on track and be the professional one. This is not how this is meant to work. Yeah, no, so, no. Um, to, my notes so are minimal. Do you remember the, the very famous film with Edward Woodward, um, English folk horror... The Wicker Man. The Wicker Man. Yes. Yes. Very, very much Wicker yeah. Man vibes. And that is what I'm excited about because I know a lot of it's um, Eurocentric based, but that very kind of old English folk mm. horror. And I, I love a stone circle. Yeah. yeah. I love, you know, 
something happening in a forest. And, and also this sort of like the Warhammer's scary and horrific because this is the sort of thing that just happens in villages. Yes. Someone just fell to slant. And there's a lot of this yeah. where it Look happens in really murders. small. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, oh, that's a good idea for a series, isn't it? Warhammer crime, not Warhammer 40k <laughs> crime. And it's Midsummer Murders in a small town in the yeah. Empire. Yeah. Well, let's do um, it. So let's pitch it. Warhammer have got all this money We should now. do that. We should do that. I should pitch yeah. it to someone. Um, the... Um, yeah, so it, this is the sort of thing that just happens all the time. And a lot of these are set in small towns where yeah. something horrific is about to happen. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, did you like this? I did. I think it's one of the better ones. I thought it was a bit gory for me, but mm -hmm. I liked the twist. And Gotrek and Felix. I've never read any Gotrek and Felix. No, but I think we should. They're fine. They're good. Um, Felix Jaeger and Gotrek Gurnison. I'm glad that you know about them because a lot of people are like, oh, you know, yeah. I think I will... People want me to know about them. Yeah, yeah. So put down the name of the book that is their biggest book. I, I, I think all the books are called like Troll Slayer, Giant Slayer, Dragon oh. Slayer or something like that as he goes up the ranks of things to slay. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, so we get to the second book in this, series, in this novel called The Other. So Stefano. Oh, wait, you've skipped out The I've Reavers. I've skipped The Reavers and the Dead. Sorry, I've skipped one. The Reavers and the Dead. So Helmut is a vole necromancer. He's yeah. a young kid who likes bringing voles back to life. Um, and while he's up on the rock he shouldn't be at, uh, yeah. bringing voles back to life. Yeah, because um, his father said, don't you. Don't you don't bring you a vole do... back to life. Don't yeah. you do some necromancy. Um, <laughs> uh, he na na sees some Norse, because there are the Norse in Warhammer. They just didn't even think of a new name. They're the horrible, Norsekans. Horrible, horrible Vikings. Vikings come and, um, and he can't tell anyone because then they'll know that he was up in the middle of the night on the rock doing the yeah. vol necromancy. Um, so they kill everyone in town. Um, weird, there's a weird thing in this where everyone except Helmut talks like a yokel. They're all like, good sir, I might be wanting him to not be mine, so says I. Yeah. Like all that, that. And and then like Helmut talks like... Normally. Uh, normally, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's a bit weird. Um, basically, Helmut sees all this happen. He runs away to a crypt, makes a deal with a lich, and then zombies all the townsfolk, mm. which kills the reavers. So I thought it was a pretty good story because basically he's a not he it's written like oh no he's a serial killer type yeah it is but he he's hasn't really real, done anything he's a dodgy dodgy bloke yeah he's dangerous if you're a vol yeah yeah <laughs> he's really dangerous if you're a rodent run yeah. and he um has to watch his whole town slayed he hides in this cave but it's like oh I've been watching for you yeah I am so an I'm, old ancient source of magic which and then, just happened to be underneath the grave of this tiny village on the yes, seafront yeah. let me into your body and yeah. then he basically takes over helmet and helmet then knows all lich law and i thought that was quite cool yeah although he realized that he's cursed at the end and it might not be that good also yeah. the the reavers were attacking because they thought some evil dark magic was coming from the town and it turns out it fucking is it, it is yeah look at the irony you made it come out you yeah. bloody viking yeah but so, I thought that was good. And I mean, obviously, kids, if a lich offers you to go in your head, don't don't, don't do that. Don't just do say that. no. Don't do it. Yeah. Um, even if they kill your town, just no one knew you were there. It's just not hide. something we could condone. Hide. Um, so awkward nerd helmet uh, steps up from being a vol necromancer to being a real necromancer. Yes. Um, and that's it. That's I the plot. I enjoyed that one. Yeah, Did good. you enjoy that one? Um, not as much. Okay. Yeah, let's... I didn't mind it, but I thought, you know, whatever. Um, but <laughs> not as much as this one. The other. So we got a lot. There's a lot of like young teenager gets in above their head is the plot of a lot of these books. Stefano's father, Stefan's father, yeah. is the head doctor of a town. But there's like an unlicensed healing girl around who's way better at it than any of them. Yeah. A natural homeopathic yeah. type healer. Um, and he sort of fancies her. Yeah. And she's also like a thief and a bard. She's yeah. basically like a multi-class. She's cool. Yeah, she's like a really cool multi-class character yeah. in D&D. &D. Um, so he ends up getting her a license to practice. Yeah. But um, it turns out she's got a bit of warp stone in her leg. Yeah. And he thinks there's a conspiracy and she's evil and she's hanging out with like the head wizard of the town. Mm. Um, but it turns out the head wizard's trying to get it removed. And end, it ends up with Helmet helping to remove the warp stone. Yeah. And Helmet starts being nice to people with warp stones in them. Yes, that's so, right. Yeah, which is so, bad because they're definitely chaos. You shouldn't be nice to people. With, dangerous thing to be nice to people with warp stones in them. So Ian, I, I, I'll show you my notes real quick. The black one, the black is, it might not work. The black is Ian, the purple is me. Ian wrote two lines and I wrote, oh my God, how did you reduce this to so little? It's clearly a class system slash prejudice against people with afflictions. The rich versus poor societal statement and kind of a bit of a love story too. I think this was written in an afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I think it was really 
it was really good because it was a very disaffected youth, really reminded me of someone being brought up, you're going to Yale, my son, we're mm, better than everyone. Yeah. And him being confronted with a girl from the wrong side of the tracks, inspiring him to help the poor. That's true. He does. Because he, he wasn't that bothered about being a doctor before. He was like training for it, but didn't really yeah, care. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was just like a good job and he yeah. wasn't really going to help anyone. Yeah, yeah. So I saw that. It's because I'm a romantic as well. Yeah, that's what it is. But also I thought this was really interesting because interesting because we have watched so we sorry read in eisenhorn mm. and ravenna if a shard gets into you yeah. you're a demon and this is like an, this comes up a lot in this book like warp stone is really present yeah in a way yeah, that yeah, it yeah. wasn't later in I warhammer i had a question i interested how people in this old era can be affected by warpstone but also not chaotic yeah it's uh, it's questionable it's mostly because no one had written any rules yet uh. um in later <laughs> editions of warhammer warpstone still this like chaos infused rock and it sort of becomes the preserve of the skaven skaven have warpstone yeah um and it's everywhere but kind of skaveny um at this point it's just freaking everywhere it's like seems to be for a lot of them the writers yeah. the main source of chaos is warpstone and it's yeah, everywhere yeah, yeah. the chaos what is made of warpstone and then when it touches some warpstones immediately like yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the game here is to try and get the warpstone out of her before it chaoses her yeah but yeah i i mean you wouldn't want to go and lie down on a warpstone beach no but it's just it's just interesting how that's evolved yeah you know yeah Okay, so let's go on to the next short story, Apprentice about, Luck. About another young man who is <laughs> bored of his life and has a D&D &D adventure. But we like him. His name's Carl and he's a bookseller. He's a bookseller, but he hates being a bookseller. Um, and <laughs> mostly he's into being a bookseller because he wants to snaffle some of the expensive books to sell himself and get himself out of being the assistant to a drunken bookseller. Yeah. Um, so a wizard comes in who wants a rare book, but Carl doesn't want to give it to him. And then a weirdo turns up. With, yeah. A, Who also oh, wants a book, but he offers them an adventure. He's like, I need that book and I'll and give treasure, you money. Treasure. And treasure. Yeah. And Carl's like, yeah, but you need to let me go on the adventure because I'm so bored. And the weird person's like, fine. He tricks his way into the adventure, doesn't he? Yeah, he sort of tricks. And they basically go on a D&D &D adventure. Yeah. They go on all the main beats of a D&D &D adventure. It even ends in a maze. Yeah, and it's amazing. And unfortunately, because he picked the the baddie. Yeah, it and, turns out that's the, he's like a dead chaos undead there's a mix between whether it's chaos or undead yeah yeah well, basically he goes on this quest and the guy is magic and he's desperate to get to the treasure which is a magic book that would allow him to do untold chaos harm yeah but um and and poor carl only realizes this when the wizard turns up and goes you're an idiot he's going to kill you yeah. and then this adventurer who you thought was a goodie he's a baddie turns into a bunch of beetles yeah a human Just animated a, he's, he's, by a, a, bunch he's of a swarm beetles. of beetles that's yeah. why he was so weird because he was in fact a swarm of beetles yeah um, and he never says i he said us yeah all the time. yeah and it's it's sort of vague as to whether they are undead or a chaos demon or yeah. like it didn't really matter and they were the same thing at the time um then, yeah th that i mean ian's saying on the last one there aren't established rules here no so it's just whatever. Well, yeah, there's weirder ones coming up. But um, yeah, the wizard saves him and Carl becomes the apprentice. Yeah. I really yeah. enjoyed it. It felt very, very in D&D &D and would recommend. Okay. Okay. Would a you recommend? Gardener, mm, okay. A gardener <laughs> in Paravon. This was so like Renaissance. It's, it's, it is. Yeah, it is. Very... It's like, it's a very like, it's almost like an absurdity. It's like, it's like one of those little, little weird stories that never yeah. goes anywhere. Cause it it's, just sort of ends. It doesn't really have a conclusion. It felt like um, a bit of a bleak French cinema. Yeah. So it's set in Paravon, which is in Bretonia, but Bretonia became a really defined setting later on. This feels like it's just in the empire. It's just in the empire yeah. that sounds a bit French. So Armand Carrière. If, yeah. is is our character and um he Great lives accent. in Paravon and um but that's right. about as French as it gets like uh, in, in later versions of Warhammer Bretonia became like Arthurian nightland and everyone else is a peasant oh, whereas okay. whereas the uh, the empire was the more like Renaissance Germany feel oh, got it um so but by this point they seem to be kind of the same okay um uh so and someone starts building a garden opposite his house and, and he can see into the garden and it's weird because the birds keep coming down to feed on the plants and then never go anywhere and then they go and look at the plants and the plants look like big knobs yeah yeah and, and it turns out it's like a weird chaos sex garden and, to, dedicated to slanesh and yeah fucking that was sorry i did a swear but slanesh obviously like obviously the likes only willy almost the only in, in the pe <laughs> in the warhammer writers of 1989 it was very clear which chaos god they wanted to write about <laughs> 
and it, it was very, very weird. And like, you know, there's a bit of subtext where the bad wizard who runs the garden said, oh, taste the nectar of the willy Top flower. Plant. Yeah. <laughs> And it's like blood, and yeah. he tastes it, and and then what? The end of the book is spoilers that he becomes obsessed with the birds and these plants. Yeah, and they find him as if he tried to fly out of the window. Yes, and he lands in these bushes of thorns, but it looks as though he was pecked to death by birds. Yes, so that's the kind of story you just finish, and you're like, hmm, hmm. yeah. I, I was like, I couldn't even remember what the ending was when I was writing my notes. I was like, <laughs> what happened? What there was happened cock boy? plants and there was a lot of like them looking at the cock plants and wondering how to get into the cock plant garden. And then they just meet the guy and he's like, yeah. come and look at my cock plants. He's like, everything's fine here. Yeah. Nothing's going Nothing on. Nothing weird at all. And then they're like, see, you can get over your obsession. But then he yeah. dies. Yeah. Um, that's a garden in Paravel. Okay. Um, then we have one of my favourites. This is a goodie. The, the Star, Star Boat. Boat. Um, so I like this because it's a really good example of old Warhammer. So okay. Eric the Ware. But there's a slant in it. There's a slant. There's a frog there's a guy. There's a little froggy frog guy. guy. But my it's first frog slant. guy. It's, it's a frog, frog guy. guy. Froggy, it's a froggy, froggy, magic frog, frog guy. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> slant are the best uh, because they don't exist anymore because they were too stupid. No. But they're, 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 they're still in the law. They've just become these like, oh, shadowy background wizards that no one's ever seen. They might come and they're, back. They're in Warhammer a bit. They more might come now, back but, in but, this new Warhammer fantasy they're doing. But yeah, so so that well, yeah, they might. The the they're, they're still like. In Age of Sigmar and Warhammer, the Slan are like the leaders of the Lizardmen, yeah. the Seraphon. Um, and they are like the descendants of the old ones who cr who <gasps> created the world and came here from a different planet. And there's this oh idea. My God. And the old ones are also characters in 40K. They're some of the original people who made the Eldar in 40K. Wait, what's and the old ones' relation to the Emperor? Oh, well, the old ones go way before the Emperor. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, it's the old, there's a whole other thing with that. Um, but but all of it was based on this idea that they used to make this range of frog guys called the Slan, Yay. and they put them in Warhammer 40K and Warhammer, and then they slowly <laughs> removed them when they were like, this is a bit too silly. And and so, uh, but at the time this was written, the whole of South America was was just frog people. Mm. Called the Slan, who are meant to be like the oldest, and they've kind of forgotten all their ancient have knowledge. Have you ever played Slan? But Probably too. I've young. got some Slan. <gasps> yeah, I have some. Only a few. Um, the original ones. Um, and uh, so yeah, so that there's there are really specifically early Warhammer thing yeah. that Slan are around, and there was this old idea once upon a time that Warhammer and Warf Warhammer world was a world in the Warhammer 40k universe, ah, which is why yeah, yeah, there yeah. are these spaceships the Slan got there on once so and have cool. forgotten how to use. Yeah. So, so this is also the starboat. It's not an actual slan. It's no, a fake we get, slan. yeah. Yeah, so, sorry, I let you do the the thing. Eric the Ware is another Viking, and um, he meets a strange frog guy, yeah. a slan, and he's recruited to find the slan spaceship, this yeah. ancient spaceship that crashed in the chaos wastes. They um, go to Erengrad, which is like a city in the north. Yeah, and it's right in the middle of the. The chaos waste. Yeah, yeah. Which so it's are really horrific. horrifically psychedelic, yeah. and and you can't live there. Um, so they go to Erengrad, and they have like a weird whaling side quest where Eric has to go and steal a MacGuffin. Yeah. Um, and he's warned about the frog guy. He's yeah. like, "Whoa, don't trust that frog guy." He's a frog guy. Yeah. And Eric's like, "Screw this! No one likes me anyway. Yeah. I'm going to help the frog guy. Yeah. You humans are terrible." Um, and they go north and they build a, um, the frog guy's got all this, loads and loads of money. Mm -hmm. And he, he got, has all this. And it, this is one of the really early Warhammer things that I'm like, well, stolen that. They build a turtle out of mithril. <laughs> they get some horses and they build like a contraption above and around them, completely made out of mithril armor, yeah. which is not a thing that existed in Warhammer much after that, because it's obviously a patented Tolkien thing. <laughs> Um, anyway, they build it out of Mithril, um, and that protects them. They, they basically journey to the Chaos Race in this tank. Yeah. Um, with it's, where it's just the Slan in his, in his little warm bath. <laughs> yeah, and the, the Slan has a little bath that he yeah. takes everywhere. And, and we, we both love Lush. So. And, for, yeah, <laughs> and, um, and a load of horses and Eric the Ware. And they're in their little shell and they keep hearing weird noises from outside and things trying to get in, but it's Mithril, so they can't. And they eventually get to the spaceship. Um, and they find it, but then when Frog Guy tries to unlock it with his webby hand, um, it goes blur. No, and because and hurts him. Yeah, yeah, because he's not a real Frog Guy. He was turned in. He wished to be turned he's into a Frog Guy. Yeah, yeah. So that and so that he'd have renown um, and money, and then he was going to come here and get even more money. Yeah, but he isn't a real Frog Guy. No. He's very sad for the whole return journey. My God, the return journey was... It's it, even more... So the, the turtle starts to fall apart. Yeah. 
and uh, Eric the Were is pushing to get back, and the frog guy is very sad. Yeah, the frog guy's dying. Yeah. And, you know, the wound's putrefying, and there's chaos demons trying to get them, and it just feels like, you know, you're watching the end of an expedition and someone's going to die. Those very, very old grim dark yeah. things where everyone just ends up crucified it, or dead. It also it's one of the ones where it just gets more psychedelic as you go on. Oh like like it my. just gets weirder and weirder it, until they're like was, running through dreams. It was so weird as the turtle collapses. It just it just to me it felt very very clearly this is like some tag along of psychedelics, yeah. or mushrooms or LSD from some maybe some sci-fi uh, writers. I don't know who wrote this one, but it was bonkers. Know. We will blame. Bonkers, bonkers. Who are we blaming for this? We're blaming uh, Steve Baxter Steve off his ba face in 1989. <laughs> but I think I really, really love this story because everything was so unexpected. Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting horses on a conveyor belt in a turtle bubble. Yeah. I wasn't expecting the Arctic being like chaotic wastelands. I wasn't expecting a spaceship in old war. Yeah, so that is one of the nicer things. A lot of boxes for me and very, very enjoyable. And a lot of us, I know, do freaking love the crazy, psychedelic, yeah. horrible I stuff. I think it's, again, Slanesh trying to get in because... There are no other chaos gods. Slanesh, he's according always to trying to wriggle his yeah, way in. Wriggle his way in. Tentacly fuck. Um, so then we get to Ignorant Armies. Yes. The title of the book. And this one is written by Jack Yeovil, who? Who, who is Kim Newman. Who I only found out because I read this. And then someone said, Oh, yeah, that's uh, Kim Newman. And I said, No, it's not. And that yeah. is Jack so Yeovil. So is Kim Newman Jack Yeovil? Yeah. And he became Kim Newman to become a movie writer. No, other way around, I think. Oh. I think possibly movie writer who then wrote under the pen name of Jack no Yeovil for some sci-fi. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's the case. Uh, I, that gives me hope because I really love writing about stuff and reviewing stuff. But mm. it's good that when you can just do all writing and be creative too. Yeah. So this is a big one. It's also on the weirder end of things. But it's weird as like, it's like a Terry Gilliam film. Yes. Yeah. So Johannes von <laughs> Mecklenburg and his very loyal and unkillable retainer Vukovic <laughs> yeah. are chasing this bad guy, this chaos lord called Cicatrice, who, who ruined his lands yeah. and stole away his brother, Wolf. So he's a he's a nobleman, but he's deserted his lands. His old mm. uncle's taking control because he was like, I must get back my brother, Wolf. Yeah. Um, and they've been pursuing him for years, years at this point, throughout the chaos wastes and through the towns and mm. uh, up in the empire. Um, and they've gone all the way around everywhere. And now Cicatrice is going to the chaos wastes for some reason. Mm. Um they have to eat their horse in the opening scene. Or they defend against some hideous chaos people who yeah. ambush them, one of which is his old, like, um, servant. Yeah. Um, and you get the impression they've just been... It's hor It's You get the impression they've been doing this for years. Yeah, It's yeah. horrific. They've sold everything. They're down to their very last, and they think they might have almost yeah. caught up with them. They're running on fumes and vengeance yeah. and nothing else. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and then they get to this strange town and it's just foreboding, foreboding, foreboding. Yeah. Horrible dwarf. The, uh, yeah, the, yeah, it's, it's like surrounded by a, a battlefield. Yeah. Sorry, yes. The yeah. setting is where they go is this uh, eternal chaos battlefield. Yeah. And I was wondering, this has to be a game tie-in. I don't think it was. It, it literally felt like... So basically the premise was every night there would be massive um, army armies or you know champions coming and just battling each other for the glory of the gods yeah yeah and then every day they'd be cleared up and the dwarf is horrible yeah. he has a sword through yes, they, him they meet these weird people who live in the town or the yeah. village alongside the battlefield which is yeah uh, uh Zvi Kleinzak, who is a dwarf with a sword through him that yeah. miraculously missed everything but he's scared to take it out in case he dies yeah uh, Misha the priest who has a symbol of every god yeah just hedging the bets um, uh, there's a guy who's like mute and has his fingers broken yeah uh, there's a woman called Anna who doesn't seem to have any other distinguishing no, features other than I being the woman she, I think she was in there to show that the dwarf is really a baddie because she was like a slave and he oh, yeah, mistreated yeah. her um, and then um, every uh, night there's a giant battle and Ian's wrote, the weirdos strip the corpses. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> Turns out every night the weirdos go out and strip the corpses. Yeah. Um, and that's how they live yeah. on uh, Ian, selling them. Ian also wrote, they are all insane in a very 80s psychedelic way. Yeah, they kind of are. Yeah. This is why it's best, it's so good being friends with Ian. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the, uh, uh, yeah, they're just, it really reminds me of something like Time Bandits. Like that yeah, just yeah. level of weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would agree. Level of gloriously weird. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's it's absolutely horrific. Yeah, um, they do fight after the first night of battle. That they hide, they hide in the, they all hide in the town hall. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Well, at uh, the pub, and um, after the first night, they go out and they look for Cicatrice and they find him because Cicatrice is now like useless. He's like yeah. almost dead. He's he's completely used up, and he's like, nah, Wolf is the leader of the war band now. Yeah. Um, but then they're betrayed briefly, like really briefly, yeah, yeah, yeah. like almost as an afterthought. They're betrayed by Kleinzak, who has uh, p- taken drugs them yeah. so Wolf can get them. Yeah, um, it's so brutal as well, Kim Newman. Yeah, no wonder you love horror. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's and then, shocking. Um, and then Wolf turns up, and they have a big fight. Yeah, um, he pulls the sword out of Kleinzak to get a sword to fight Wolf with. A very, and in very the end, cool and very gross. Vukovic sacrifices himself, and his act of sacrifice restores Wolf to not a horrific mutant, yeah. but a little boy again. Yeah, and that's I it. mean, honestly, I wish someone had warned me because the way to read this book is completely surrender everything you know <laughs> and absorb, absorb, absorb. And it was. M- a crazy like minefield of like brutality but the story was like really heartfelt and strong i mean it's a lot i'm very proud of myself for electing to read this book (laughs) it's way grosser than a lot of stuff we've read it is but it's also like it is like an 80s horror it's sort of gross in a sort of nightmare on elm street yeah Yeah, way it's like not as it's weirdly not as horrific as necropolis in many ways yes definitely yeah fantasy horror but Um, a lot of like slicings and hewings of acts and yeah. fleshy bits coming off and fingers being broken. Yeah. Um, there's one more. Yeah. So after they, that, the the ignorant armies, uh, we have the laughter of the dark gods. Yeah. I must say, I kind of I kind of checked out by this point. I have written <laughs> Kurt von Deal and Oleg Zaharov are called to the chaos wastes. Kurt has the armor of a dead chaos warrior. They gather their various followers, but I can't actually remember the rest. Some chaos bullshit happens probably. <laughs> So that was what Ian wrote. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. That's me. So basically what happens in this is Kurt is a normal champion, but he's wearing the army. He wears this armour. Of, um, of a great chaos champion. Yeah. yeah. And as his quest proceeds, he's taken over by the armour and it's telling him, the more people you can lead in my name, I will make you a god. Yeah. So he's fighting everyone to beat them and then make them follow him. But as this happens, he realises they're all circling him, waiting for a weakness so they can kill him and they can be the big bad. Yeah, Eventually, the, go ahead. Sorry. it's a long wandering set of fights, which well, is again why I thought this has got to be a game that's no. out there uh, it an has, arena or... it has very big wandering monster energy there's an awful yes. lot of like there's two of us oh look we've just met some beastmen I killed one of them so they all follow me now yeah. it reminds me of Heroes of Might and Magic if anyone knows what that is but you, and you walk along <laughs> they walk along a bit further and they meet some Chaos Dwarves yeah. and they're annoying so then the Chaos Dwarves they kill a Chaos Dwarf and they follow them yeah. and then they meet some Slanish people and they kill a Slanish person yeah, and then they yeah, want yeah. new followers and they just build up that, that's what happens throughout the book well that's why I thought it might just be wandering t- around I thought there's there was probably a game in the 80s called i don't know old warhammer arena yeah and that would happen but anyway no um so the ending is that it's a lot of big horrible chaotic fights and in the end he does get what he wants but he doesn't become a god he becomes a demon right yes that yeah. makes sense yeah yeah so, so so yeah um did you enjoy this book i did you did i did because okay. it's just the, the way this is written is a bunch of real hobbyists who are passionate <laughs> and love it and they're just exploring it. It's that whole youthful... Did any, if anyone's read ZX Spectrum magazine or <laughs> those old computer magazines, yeah. it's that amazing adolescent or yeah. passionate geek energy. Off their face on drugs, geek energy. Yeah. <laughs> I um, don't know. Yeah. And, I, oh, yeah. And I love, you know, fantasy, you know, stuff. And I love a bit of like oldie worldy horror. So I was kind of absorbing it all. I mean, it was too violent for me, but I am very pleased I've read it. I enjoyed okay. it. Okay, I'm pleased I read it. There were some bits I did enjoy. It feels a bit self-indulgent to me. And there is a lot of like, I think the real problem is it's all in that weird tone. And by the sixth or seventh story, it was just getting a bit much. We got to the yeah. M one and I was like, oh God, another, cha- another wandering chaos guy tries to get through psychedelic land you're like i've just read this story five times well i was gonna i was gonna ask you because this is before even black library yeah this is unpublished by box tree limited yeah 
for Games Workshop. And is this the tone of the codexes of that time? No. Is it similar to the White Dwarfs of that time? A, a bit, a bit. There wasn't, there just wasn't as much. Like there weren't really codexes at that time. There was a big old chaos psychedelic book thing. There was White Dwarf articles. Mm. I think this is probably slightly weirder than those, slightly wackier than those. Yeah, um, edgier. Uh, it has a little bit of that feel, doesn't it? Of like, yeah. I'm I'm an, I'm 20 in 1987. I'm going to write some really dark fantasy with drugs. Yeah, that, <laughs> like, that's another question I had. You know, a lot of elements of the warp are, warp are very psychedelic, yeah. mind bending. Is there a drug culture or anything druggy around Warhammer that I've missed? Or? Not, not really now, but in the 80s, it was very much like part of that sort of like metal, psychedelic sort of world. Like all the people writing this were like massive psychedelic prog fans, psychedelic and prog fans. Okay. Right? Yeah, they well, would have been. And then they would have been writing this. And it, it just has that sort of rock and roll. Yeah, the yeah, slanish yeah. things like really hair metally. Yeah, yeah, it's the yeah. late 80s. It's got that thing where even if they weren't in like Nottingham all off their faces all the time, <laughs> they certainly thought it was cool to be. I, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I definitely, I received that. I think, yeah, there's, there's a lot of like tripped out vibes and yeah yeah it's just, it's really interesting uh on another question i wanted to ask you did you pick up anything about like history that you didn't know or it, were you surprised how far away it was from what you um it, i'm surprised it, there was bits in it like I, the there's almost like things that would be monumentally rare in warhammer now were yeah. like just casual. Oh yeah, we just got an entire machine full of of mithril, and also this yeah. guy uh, just turned himself into a slan. We got yeah. to find a spaceship. How long does it take? Not that long. Uh, you know, like okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like it's a bit. It's, it's stuff that's like, whoa, okay, really? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. But that the novelty of that is quite nice because we have to go through quite a lot. Maybe sometimes five books in a row to get to a yeah, slan in a spaceship. Yeah. Whereas now there's like it's a short story. It's another it's another frog yeah, in a spaceship. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And I think I'm trying to think back to like 80s Britain. We only <laughs> just got Sky TV. Yeah, we, it's 1989, and there's not a lot going on. No, the and only fantasy is the one you can create in your mind yeah, with mushrooms. So I think this would have kind of been like, yeah, like quick hits. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I wonder if it was like a, a collection published elsewhere as well. Yeah. I also want to do a shout out. There was a, a really charming YouTuber with, I think, 16 subscribers that ha was reading out the stories from this. Um, and I want to give him a shout out because I just, I really enjoyed uh, listening to him. And uh, yeah, talk about something else while I find this. Do, 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 uh, do, no, do, talk. Do, 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 do. Where are we going to go and eat some food in 10 minutes? Ignorant armies. Where are we going to find the food? Where's the food? Where's the food for today? It's the Amersham doing food. Okay, here we go. I found it. Um, You've meddled, my boy? Okay. Really? Collection of ancients. Yeah. So. I... You've meddled, my boy? Carl could only shake his head. Blue spots still floated in his vision. So this is um, uh, the lovely Collector of Ancients, all one word on YouTube. Uh, just really pure. He's only got a few videos up there. but because also this was three years ago, so he may, may or may not still be doing them. I know. Or if remembered, he has a YouTube account. Yeah. But uh, we'll but, see. Yeah, shout out to Collector of Ancients and just people who are finding a little bit of joy and love in in, in Warhammer and sharing yeah. it. Yeah, so there we go. That's, that's Ignorant Armies, our yeah. first Warhammer book. Yay. Yeah. Well done, us. Um, we have one more on the go because we're going to do the opposite end of this, which is Gothgul Hollow, Ooh, and which yeah. in my head was like a totally modern and completely standalone Age of Sigmar book. But <laughs> as, when we, as you'll find out when we read that one, turns out to also be a relic of the 80s. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah. Um, as I said, all the things are in the thing below. Yes. Um, all our channels are in the thing below. You should go and follow them. But otherwise, thanks for listening. And I guess um, we'll see you next time when we do Flight of the Eisenstein? Yep. Yeah? Yeah. Brilliant. We'll see you then. See ya. Bye. Bye.